CIA Director Mike Pompeo could be confirmed as Secretary of State as early as next week. That's when the full Senate is expected to vote. But there is mounting opposition to Pompeo, and he may become the only Secretary of State who has not received a favorable vote by the Foreign Relations Committee. Pompeo has been making the rounds on Capitol Hill in an attempt to garner support, while some, like Republican Senator Rand Paul, have said they will likely vote no on his nomination. President Trump is confident he made the right choice. I think, uh, I think Mike Pompeo is extraordinary. Uh, I think he'll go down as truly a great Secretary of State. I will say this about Rand Paul. He's never let me down. Rand Paul is a very special guy, as far as I'm concerned. He's never let me down. I understand, and Rand Paul doesn't want to let the president down, but Rand Paul might say he answers to the American people. I want to bring in Eli Stokels, an MSNBC political analyst, and Josh Ernest and Andy Card back with me. Andy, McConnell can bring Pompeo's nomination to the Senate floor, even if he's not favored by the Foreign Relations Committee. So how do you see this playing out? Well, I happen to believe the president deserves the benefit of the doubt when it comes to nominees. So uh, hold the pe pre president accountable if the person doesn't live up to the responsibility. So I favor Mike Pompeo being confirmed as Secretary of State. That's who the president wants. He's been with confirmed all due respect, once, put him there. With all due respect, you've got Scott Pruitt, You've got Ben Carson, you had Mike Flynn, uh, you got Rex Tillerson. It's not like the president has a great track record at this That's point. That's right, and hold the president accountable. Hold, hold the accountable. president accountable would be don't give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, I, I, this is a significant state, Secretary of State's a big deal. He needs a Secretary of State. Right now he needs one. The world is like a mess. Okay, then, the secretaries. then do, are Democrats backed into a corner here with regard to Mike Pompeo? He did just have this meeting with Kim Jong-un. If, if he's not confirmed, does that set us back in terms of... Our, our relations there? Well, I recognize that that certainly is the argument made by the, uh, Trump and his loyalists on Capitol Hill. Uh, the problem is, I think that has to be undermined by the fact that President Trump fired the Secretary of State that was advocating negotiations with North Korea nine days after these, this o diplomatic opening was talked about. So if uh, you know, changing horses midstream, if you will, is such a bad idea, Trump is the one who initiated changing horses in midstream here. So I, I think that's a tough argument for them to make. I think the second hurdle they're going to have to overcome is there are reports that Mr. Pompeo, over the last couple of weeks, as he's been going through these private meetings with senators to talk about his nomination, did not actually disclose, even when he was talking in a classified setting, his trip to North Korea, which I think is going to be problematic. If you're a wavering senator wondering if you can trust this guy with the substantial responsibilities of being Secretary of State, you now know that he has not been honest and forthright with you, even in a private setting, over probably the top item on his agenda. And I think that is... Uh, a uh, curious strategy for winning over someone who may be wavering on your nomination. Eli, what's the Washington reaction? Because just a week ago, people who weren't even Mike Pompeo fans were telling me he's playing this right. He had called every living far, uh, former Secretary of State, including Hillary Clinton. He was shaking hands. He was kissing babies. And now things seem to be in a different situation. What are they telling you in D.C.? Well, the North Korea trip, the surprise trip over there on Easter Sunday, that is an interesting wrinkle in all of this. And some people view that as an affront to the process, the fact that a person who has not yet been confirmed as Secretary of State is making those overtures uh, to try to lay the groundwork for historic talks before the Senate has signed off on the nomination itself. And then there are other people, though, who look at the high-stakes talks that are looming and the importance of that moment as a reason to put a Secretary of State in in place. And I think it's worth pointing out that, yes, he's changing horses midstream, President Trump, uh, but Mike Pompeo is someone uh, who people in Washington understand this president may listen to, uh, certainly trust, has a close relationship with him, brought him in to start doing the daily briefings about a year ago, and they have a good rapport. Uh, Pompeo, by all accounts, knows how to talk to the president and get him perhaps to listen. And so whereas Rex Tillerson was never empowered uh, to really carry out this president's agenda, whether he was even uh, familiar with or, or clear about what the president's agenda was, is really anyone's guess. Um, people believe that Mike Pompeo, who is closer to Donald Trump, uh, may be someone uh, who, as Secretary of State, can actually fill the role in a way that Rex Tillerson could not. Andy, what does having a working relationship with Kim Jong-un look like? It's, people don't necessarily understand who he is and this nation. We're not talking about Emmanuel Macron. This is a guy with 120,000 
prisoners. He starves them. He doesn't offer them educations. He, he, he deprives them of basic human rights. I don't think we know anybody that claims they have a working relationship with Kim. Trump thinks he can have including one. Including the Chinese. I don't think they have a working relationship with him. I think they support him, but they don't ha have much of a relationship with him. So, no, we, we don't know. It's uncharted territories. I do not have a problem with uh, the CIA director going over to have a breakthrough meeting and not talking about it. I happen to think that's probably the job of the CIA director. So I didn't have a, tr a lot of problem with Mike Pompeo going over there when I found out about it. To me, it's risky. It in gives him more credibility than he needs. And I he want to... Yes. Yes. And, and, and I want to see our government have lots of scenarios before they go over for this meeting with Kim Jong-un. You know, what does success look like? Okay, well then what let's share the that because James Savridis weighed in on what he thinks, that he, he thinks a meeting would look like. I think President Trump somehow feels he will walk in, slap the table like he's selling a building in Manhattan, and walk out the door to collect his Nobel Peace Prize. Ain't going to happen that way. Well, this is going to be a process that has to unfold. And let's remember, he didn't just walk into meetings, slap down a term sheet. He couldn't even get a U.S. bank to bank with him. He's the debtor in chief. The guy went bankrupt four times. And we're talking about Kim Jong-un in North Korea here. Yeah, well, the other funny thing about this is that there really is one play in Donald Trump's negotiation playbook, and that is to threaten to walk away from the table. And he's already actually played that he's play just yesterday. <laughs> but, that, but on Pompeo, I actually don't have any objections either with, this, with the CIA director going to North Korea. And it's obviously that intelligence channel that has long been used by American officials in both in the Obama administration and with the Bush administration uh, when there were conversations to be had with the North Koreans. I think in this case, what is uh, concerning to me about it is that uh, certainly in the Obama administration, when we dispatched a, a senior intelligence official to go to North Korea, we would talk to Congress about what the plan was. Uh, it's not apparent that they did that in this case. Uh, we also have not heard the Trump administration make clear that Mr. Pompeo made that trip in the context of being the CIA director. They've allowed people to suspect that he went over there as, a, as the chief diplomat in waiting. And I think that kind of ambiguity, ambiguity and the failure to clarify that for, uh, with Congress is going to have a negative political impact on his ability to get confirmed. I, I agree with you. I think it was played poorly, but the fact of the trip didn't trouble me as much as the reaction to how they were dealing with with Congress. I actually think he should have been more candid with Congress talking about it, but that's going to be an impact in the political process of confirming him. Eli Sokol's last point, H.R. Bluff and stuff seems to be the only play President Trump has. Does Washington think that's the right way to go with North Korea, given who we're dealing with? I don't know if Washington is all of one mind on this, but there is concern that, that Donald Trump is going to be the one who decides one way or another on what category, what qualifies as fruitful in these meetings. And he has not been clear and, and really doesn't ever offer a whole lot of clarity about what he thinks that is. He wouldn't answer the question yesterday about whether uh, releasing the prisoners is a precondition to sitting down with Un, uh, and he has not given any real clarity about whether or not the, the U.S. is seeking complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula or would settle for something less than that. We should remind our audience there are three Americans still in detainment as prisoners of war in North Korea. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.